Hi everybody, it's Ann Katzoff of Ask Design. Welcome. Today's tutorial will show you how to create multiple page sizes inside a single InDesign document. It's a super useful feature and I know of two, two key ways to do it. So get yourself ready and we'll rock and roll. It's fairly common for a project to have many components, each one a different size. Maybe it's a branding project with the usual corporate parts of a logo, letterhead, business card, and envelope, perhaps even a poster, t-shirt, and brochure to go along with that. Or maybe it's a book jacket with two flaps, a spine, and back and front covers. One approach is to create a new InDesign document for every separate piece, and I would certainly do that for multi-page files like brochures and books. For one-page items, though, you could use another approach, create different page sizes inside the same InDesign document. There are two ways to accomplish this, and I'll show you each one. So first we want to start with a new document. So you need to launch in design, create the new document. The size of my sample file is, as you can see here, it's 24 inches wide by 36 high. I always include a 1 8 bleed for my print projects. I like to use the advanced workspace and that is because it brings these very useful panels to the side here and um, notably the pages panel which will play a very key role in the first method of our tutorial. It's where all the magic happens. So method number one is using the pages panel. Now, I want to show you one quick thing that may be your first instinct, but it's not going to really accomplish the goal. So we've got the 24 by 36 portrait page here, page one. Now let's say we want to show the client the same poster uh, in a landscape format. So your first instinct might be, well, let's just rotate that page. So I've done that here for you. You can see what happens. To get that rotation, you select the page and go to the hamburger menu, down to page attributes, rotate spread view 90 degrees clockwise, counterclockwise, or 180. Let's go counterclockwise. And you'll see it gets that little symbol there and it rotates the whole thing which is not really what we want so I'm going to do a command Z. What we would prefer is that you create a new master page so let's go up to a master which is 24 by 36 let's do a new master page okay master C it's the same thing and we're going to change the size of that master page to 36 by 24. And the reason I'm having you do it in the master page area is so you, you can reuse it on any document page. So it's, it's very useful to create your new page sizes as master pages. So we've got it selected. Let's go down here to edit page size. Now there's a little curious thing going on, I think, within design where this method won't work unless you first choose another um, custom size. So let's just choose, let's say, hmm, let's go letter half. It doesn't really matter, but let's make sure we've done that. And it's changed that size. You can see it's eight and a half by five and a half. Let's go back to edit custom, edit, edit pages, excuse me, and now we'll enter a new custom size. I've actually done this several times, so today 
we'll make a new one, 24 by 36. But make sure your measurements are inserted in the fields, otherwise it's not going to work. Okay. So you've named it, you've created it with the new sizes. We'll add that to our list of presets. Let's make sure it's there today, 36 by 24. Select it, and let's click OK, see what happens. Aha, uh -huh. there we go. Is it correct? Yes, it is, 36 by 24. So what were the steps? OK, first of all, I created a new master page. Doesn't really matter what size. And I selected um, one of the existing preset custom sizes just to get the wheels in motion. Then I created my new custom size and added it to the list of presets, and then I selected that new preset. Okay, so that's method number one. Um, and remember, the key part to, you know, not losing your mind in this method is to make sure um, that, that you select another preset size before you select the new custom size. Now, I'm going to duplicate this page one. It'll be all the way at the bottom here. And then I will take the C master that we just created and apply it to that page. It will warn you it has a new custom size. Use master page size. And then you'll see you have to resize the components. So let's see what we've got here. I select everything pretty much and group it and then resize it. As best as I can. So you got to fiddle with that a little bit. Bring it down. And there you go. That's the basic idea anyway. Okay. Method number two. It's using the page tool. Now this is um, a relatively new feature. It was introduced in CS5 and maybe you don't even know about it. It's a selection tool so it's right underneath the direct select tool right here, page tool. So now I'm going to show you a slightly different approach. I've got a landscape view here, your headline goes here, and let's say everything's fine, but we want um, a similar treatment, similar landscape view, but just a different size. So let's open the Pages panel and select the Page tool. Go to the page that you want. and click on the page. Okay, let me show you that again. Click on the page. And note up in the control area, it's showing you, well, first of all, let's change our reference point to the top right corner. So everything's zero, zero there. Now we've got 36 by 24, and it's using one of my previous custom page sizes that I created. But let's choose something else. Let's see what happens. Okay, it resized it. Do a Command Z because I want to show you a really cool feature. There's this liquid page rule that's super cool. I want to show you how to scale it while you resize it. Okay, I'm going to do that again. Choose, let's go letter half. Really? Isn't that cool? Whoops. Zoomed in too much. Hold on. <laughs> it's, I don't know what page size it is. What is it? It's an odd page size, isn't it? Let's change it to something less odd, like maybe 24 by 18. 
Okay, and you see it's still in liquid mode. Okay, you can keep playing with it. Maybe it should be 14. You see how it scales it based on your measurements. It's pretty cool, huh? Now, of course, um, it's really um, a matter of perhaps combining the two methods. If you want to add your own custom size, and you go back to method number one to add the new size, like I've done here <laughs> three times already. So I think it's really an interesting option to scale it while you're resizing it and uh, it saves you some difficulty. Um, I think there's also this um, opportunity to grab one of the nodules and um, press Alt while you're dragging it. Let's see if that works. That should resize it. I'm not sure. Yeah, sometimes it pops back. I'm not sure if that actually works, but it's a, it's a good thing to experiment with. Now, uh, one kind of project that this comes, comes in really handy for is creating uh, hardcover book jackets uh, right here on the spread. I've got multiple page sizes next to each other using the page tool. So let me show you how I did that. Let's expose the master page area and uh, I'm going to create a new master page. Let's go to a master and uh, just click create new page. It will create a copy of it basically and while that's selected I'm going to create um, rather select a smaller size that's more normal for a book. So let me see if I have one. Um, I have a t-shirt one. Let's use that one. What the heck? Okay, so we've got a t-shirt size 10 by 10 and with my page tool I'm selecting it I'm just going to change the measurement there to 8. Okay, so that's a little bit more normal. And um, I'll create a new document page based on DMaster. Let's rename DMaster so we understand what it is. Let's go to Master Options and um, let's go 8 by 10. That's how you rename it. So after we've created our new master page, 8 by 10, let's create a couple of regular pages after page 15. Uh, create a new page. And um, let's base it on the master page D. Drag that on top. So it becomes the new size. I'm going to duplicate that and bring it right up next to it. So those brackets appear. There we go. Increase the size a little bit for you. Okay, now I want to insert a spine in between them, so I'll create a duplicate again. Bring it up there. Now, I'm going to select that middle page And with my page tool, make sure it's selected. And um, I think I have a spine already. Let's go um, a one inch spine. Okay, beautiful. Now what's interesting is that there's this gap here. But the beauty of the page tool is you select the page and just drag it over. It's that simple. 
So now let's build in the flaps on the left and right. Let's duplicate this. Duplicate the page. Bring it up there. Duplicate this page. And bring it up there. Okay. I think so. Come on. Doesn't want to. Okay. With our page tool, let's grab this page. And I think I have a flap. Yep, I do. Oh, look, I forgot to change my reference point. Command Z. Let's change our reference point to the right so everything will happen um, on the left side instead of the right side. See what I'm saying? Okay. And then, basically, we can copy that page, duplicate that page, and bring it up here. That'll be the easy thing to do. And we can get rid of this road guy. Okay. So there, my friends, we have front and back cover, spine, and the two flaps. So there are a lot of different things you can do with this page tool. It's, it's fun, and it's crazy, and it's, it's just really cool. So play with it. Tell me how, how it goes. Leave a comment. Ask questions. I'd love to hear from you. Have fun. Take care. Bye-bye.